Hey guys, Jason. And here's an update video that you guys might enjoy. It's pertaining to Gavin Anderson. Now, if you don't know, Gavin Anderson is the lead developer of the Bitcoin Core project. Now, this guy has been around Bitcoin since the very beginning. He's actually one of the few people that's been talking to Satoshi, that not currently, but talked to Satoshi in direct email. He's actually one of the ones that holds, and I have a video on this pertaining topic, but he holds the key to send out an alert to all the clients. So he basically has this like little action key code that lets him send out an emergency update to all the clients that display a message in the bottom. Again, got a video on that if you want to watch it. It's pretty interesting. But this guy's, you know, this guy developed so much in Bitcoin and he's such a big supporter. He actually went to talk to the federal government, you know, talking about Bitcoin. Uh, he, he's just the guy I look up to because he's done a lot of work for Bitcoin and really progressed Bitcoin to where we are today. It wouldn't be here without him, I would say. So what is he talking about? You know, what, what, when, he set, when he posts a link or whatever, it's either an update to the Bitcoin core client or some new idea. Well, his new idea pertains to the Bitcoin core client, but what he wants to do is change the block size limit. So if you don't know, currently um, a limit is one megabyte. So inside each block of the blockchain, you know, we're making, all these transactions get pumped into a block, but the block limit itself is capped at one megabyte, not very much. Now, I know you're going to say, Jason, this doesn't happen all the time. We've had a few peaks at one megabyte where, you know, stuff gets skimmed off the top because it can't get put into that current block. But, you know, the averaging, Jason, is like 400 kilobytes. You know, we still have ways to go. Well, I wanted to give some information because he has some really interesting research he did with some testing. I think it's phenomenal. So he's recommending that we upgrade to a 20 megabyte block, right, limit. A 20 megabyte block limit would be 20 times as much data in a block. And there's a question about, you know, that make the blockchain bigger and you're, you know, I think now, I've been going through my computer coin and it's up to 30.5 gigabytes for Bitcoin. And that's crazy a Bitcoin core client's getting so big. But the fact that we, you know, thinking, okay, now, you know, Bitcoin's getting used more. So I have it written down here. There are... 70 trans that would set it to 70 transactions a second. Tr 70, 70 transactions a second. We're in a world economy where we're having hundreds of thousands of transactions in the world economy every second. Yes, hundreds of thousands of transactions. If you want Bitcoin to compete, it has to have the capability to do so. So he's been doing testing on this 20 megabyte block thing. Of course, you know any good programmer is going to do extensive testing to figure out whether it's going to work or not. And he's been doing a lot of testing on his computer, which is only you know, a decent computer. It has 16 gigs of RAM and stuff, so it's, it's a higher end, but it handles it perfectly with no issues. I think this is pretty interesting, but here's the catch. And this is where people are starting to get a little iffy about whether they want to do it or not. It would require a hard fork. Now, if you don't know, I got a video on hard forking, but essentially a hard fork is you have to basically get all the miners and all the nodes to accept to change course. So, you know, imagine you're a boat and you're going straight forward and you say, okay, well, that's great, but we want to change something in the protocol, so we got to shift over this way a little bit. Essentially what hard forking is. Um, now, this would be the third, if this was to get pushed up, this would be the third large, or not third largest, the third hard fork ever happening. And you, whenever there's a hard fork, there's a big, you know, um, debate, I guess is the best word for it, because Hard forking takes and changes the protocol that Satoshi set in forth. Now, again, we've already done it twice, but uh, it's one of these things where even people like me are kind of iffy about it. But coming from someone like Gavin Anderson, I, it has my seal of approval because I trust this guy. There's not very many people in Bitcoin I trust. You know, I trust, but I don't trust trust. And he's one of these guys I trust trust. Uh, if he told me something was wrong, you know, or if he told me we got to change something, I kind of follow his way because I know he's a very intelligent individual. He has a lot of background and he's been working on Bitcoin for what is it like five years now? It's a long time. So he's also tested, if you're interested, a 200 megabyte block. Now he's, he, he was talking about how he had to change the max stick catch size and the database catchy size in the settings, in, in the console settings, um, to allow his computer to handle those situations. But 200 megabytes, it shows that he's, you know, he's thinking ahead. He's thinking, okay, how is this going to work in the future? And how are we going to you know, push this through when Bitcoin gets really big? And this, it's this um, foreshadowing and knowing what's coming to really push. Because for all we know, one week away, Bitcoin could explode. I'm not saying it's going to, but it could. And you know, if Bitcoin's slow, people don't want to use it. You've got to keep up with the times. So I know people are going to ask me you know, um, what my opinion is. Now, I actually just saw this. I want to reference this. On average, now this is because you know, average all the hours in the day, there are 210 thousands transactions a second yeah that's crazy 
anyway, the, you know, right now we're averaging about 400 to 500 kilobytes. Averaging. You got to realize during, you know, larger sales or during turn t certain times of the week or day or month, you know, those numbers go up and we reach very close. Sometimes we peak out at one megabyte and then all the other transactions that should have occurred in that block of 10 minutes has to get pushed on for another 10 minutes. That can become an issue. I know one of the big selling points of Litecoin is it's factor transaction time and there's a whole discussion video I did explaining how necessarily the transaction time isn't that important because the longer amount of time in total you have, the more secure that coin is, you know, in ensuring you're not getting um, double spent. And that's a whole other topic, but if you're interested, look it up. I got some videos on double spending and the phenomenon and how it happens. But I think this is kind of interesting. I, whenever this guy posts a post and, or, a, or a note or something, and something like this where he's talking about hard forking Bitcoin again, it's important. And I know you might say, well, Jason, you know, no, it is important. There, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Whenever you decide to hard fork Bitcoin, it's a very tough decision. It's a very big decision to make. But there's been argument about this for a long time. You know, the last year or so, it started to get more and more important. Hey, guys, we're starting to reach this limit. What do we do? You know, how do we handle this? And the fact that he's testing this and it works. What I find even crazier is that he's testing 200 megabyte block sizes. Right now, we're using 400 kilobytes. He's really future-proofing it. He's really looking into it. Again, you don't want to have to keep doing hard forks all the time. So, guys, just a little update. I find it very fascinating. Uh, first of all, hard forks in their own sense fascinate me because of the community community um, support, I guess would be the words, community support and engagement that has to be required along with peer nodes changing um, client version, along with um, mining um, pools. I know that's one of the big things. You always have to make sure you get changed. You have to set a certain block limit and say, okay, at this block, we're going to hard fork it to this side. And... I've actually witnessed um, as I was mining a couple of hard forks in altcoins, and it's been a really fascinating experiment. But um, I think this is interesting. I think honestly, I think before the end of 2015, we'll see the um, hard forks of 20 megabytes. I don't know, and this is a big don't. I don't know if it, we'll get it pushed up to 200 megabytes. Even if it works, I don't know if we'll push that. I can see them pushing, you know, 20 or 50, possibly, and that's a you know asterisk, possibly 100. We're probably going to see 20 or 50, you know, or somewhere between that. But the fact that we're, you know, looking forward, if you're watching this video, you might say, I don't see the importance of it. But it's this fact that we're looking ahead, we're foreshadowing what's going to happen, and we're trying to be uh, future proof with it. Something kind of cool, because sometimes with these altcoins, I'll see stuff, you know, go wrong. They'll try to hard fork, and there's a huge issue, and it doesn't work right, and it ruins the coin. And with this, you know, we got to be sure we're careful. But with someone trusted like Gavin Anderson working on it, I know we'll do it right. Anyway, guys, this video was just to inform you about this because hard fork number three possibly coming up. Cryptocurrencies news, you know, really rattling around right now. And then out of nowhere, Gabe Anderson comes in and says, hey, I have information for you guys. And it's like, oh, this trumps everything. Anyway, have a great night. Thanks for watching.